If you've spent any time watching the AI space recently, you know exactly what everyone is talking about, deep generative models. We're talking about the systems that produce those, you know, astonishingly realistic images, the coherent text, the videos that just seem to defy reality. It's true. And that whole boom has really been about this uh, mathematical pursuit of perfection. These systems are trying to build a model that can perfectly recreate our messy, complex world. I mean, down to every last speck of noise. They're fundamentally high-fidelity reconstruction engines. And that pursuit of reconstruction, as amazing as the results are, that's exactly where the monumental cost comes from. I mean, if you look at a generative model trying to describe a video, it's not just saying a dog is running. Mm. It's trying to model the exact texture of the brick wall in the background or the static in the corner of the frame. It's an insane amount of wasted compute. It is. And we've been digging into some material this week that suggests... Well, that maybe the future of advanced AI doesn't lie in high fidelity generation at all, but in deep understanding, it's a fundamental shift in philosophy. And our mission today is to really unpack that philosophy. We are moving away from modeling every pixel and toward modeling the concept. We're going to dive into joint embedding predictive architectures, or JIPA, specifically the latest on vision language, JIPA VL JIPA. We need to explain how this new approach gets such stunning efficiency, how it can cut model size in half and still compete with giants like diffusion models. And what's fascinating is the core technical difference. Think of it this way. Traditional generative AI is like a painter who has to perfectly reproduce every single leaf on a tree. The LGBA, on the other hand, is a concept artist. It doesn't predict the next pixel or token. It predicts the abstract representation, the underlying idea. All of this learning happens in what's called the embedding space, this deep, abstract space where concepts live, not the noisy, surface-level pixel space. Okay, let's unpack this idea of compute wastage a little more. Why are our current heroes, these huge generative models, such compute hogs? Let's start with text, with the LLMs. Right. If you look at those colossal autoregressive models, you know, the big transformers we all use, they have this built-in inefficiency. They're designed to break down a prediction problem into this massive series of tiny sequential steps. They have to literally write the answer out word by word, token by token. So when I ask ChatGPT something, it isn't just giving me the answer instantly. It's predicting the first word, then the second based on the first, and on and on. It's inherently linear. Precisely. And while that gives them incredible flexibility, it lets them handle logic, conversations, all of that, it's just inherently slow at runtime. They can't output the whole concept all at once. And then on the visual side, we have diffusion models. They dominate image and video right now, and the results are phenomenal, but they're definitely not fast, mm -hmm. especially not for generating a movie. No, not at all, because their whole generation process is like, yeah. imagine you take a beautiful picture and slowly add noise until it's just static. The diffusion model has to learn how to perfectly undo that step by step. So to make a new image, it has to walk that entire long cleanup path. We're talking hundreds, sometimes thousands of sequential network passes. So whether we're talking about LLMs or diffusers, the expense really comes from this need to operate in that surface level space, tokens or pixels, because they're obsessed with high fidelity generation. That's the key insight, VLJPA attacks. Think about it. If a traditional vision language model is trained in token space, it gets penalized if it predicts one synonym over another, even if the meaning is identical. It wastes so much capacity predicting that surface level variability, all these hmm. irrelevant high frequency details. This obsession with surface noise is exactly what JP is built to abstract away. It just says, look, I don't care how you phrase the concept. I only care that you got the core meaning right. Okay, let's pivot then to the VLJP paradigm. If they aren't generating, what exactly are they doing during training? What does learning an embedding space actually look like? So this all goes back to the general JP framework, which Jan LeCun has been championing. The system learns by prediction, but crucially without generation. It has um, three main components, a context encoder, a target encoder, and a predictor. Imagine you're looking at an image. The context encoder looks at the visible part, say the left side, and turns it into a mathematical summary, an embedding. The concept. Exactly, the concept. Meanwhile, the target encoder is looking at the missing piece, the right side of the image, and it also turns that into an embedding. The predictor's job is then really simple. Mm -hmm. Using only the summary from the context, it has to predict the summary from the target. So the error signal isn't, did you draw the pixel correctly? Mm -hmm. It's, did your idea of the missing part match the target's idea of the missing part? That is the conceptual shift right there. And for VLGAPA specifically, it just uses massive amounts of caption data for pre-training 
you know, web scale sources, video text data. The whole objective is to look at a video or an image and learn to predict the embedding of the text caption directly. It's just linking the visual concept to the language concept all in that one efficient abstract space. And this is where the architecture becomes a huge deal for anyone interested in scalable AI. We're talking about doing more with a fundamentally smaller engine. And we have concrete proof of that efficiency. In studies where they did a strictly controlled comparison, same vision encoder, same training data, everything equal against a standard token generative VLM, VLGPI delivered stronger overall performance across the board. And here's the jaw-dropping part. Yeah. It did this with 50% fewer trainable parameters. Half the size for better conceptual understanding. That just completely disrupts the whole assumption that scale and generative power are the same thing as intelligence. It really emphasizes this semantic advantage. By training purely on abstract representations, VLGP focuses entirely on the semantics that are relevant to the task. It just bypasses that whole computational drain of modeling linguistic variation or trying to paint every pixel perfectly. It's pure meaning over surface mechanics. That parameter efficiency is fantastic for training, for deployment. But let's talk about the user experience. I mean, the biggest bottleneck for real-world AI is often runtime, inference. How does this non-generative objective actually translate into faster output when you use the system? It enables what's called a lightweight text decoder. Since all the heavy lifting, the prediction work is already done in that embedding space, the model already knows the concept. So this decoder is only called up when it's needed just to translate those predicted embeddings into readable text. In contrast that with a typical VLM, again, they're just constantly churning out tokens. Exactly. Traditional VLMs are stuck with continuous uniform sampling. They're generating text token by token at every single step, even when nothing interesting is happening. Which leads directly to what I think is the biggest aha moment here for anyone interested in practical AI, the idea of selective decoding. Yes. So if you imagine a long video, say a, a, a minute of someone just walking down a hallway, a standard VLM has to decode and output text at fixed intervals, maybe every second. But VLJP, because it operates on concepts, it supports an adaptive selection of its decoding points. So the system can actually look at the conceptual embeddings and say, hang on, nothing significant has changed here. I can skip reporting this detail. How does it know where to skip? It uses a method that's basically rooted in clustering. It groups moments in the video that are conceptually the same. It partitions the whole sequence into segments of high uh, intersegment monosemanticity. That's a mouthful. It is, yeah. It's okay. a fancy way of saying it finds chunks of time where the core meaning isn't changing. And if a segment is semantically coherent, you only need to decode it once right at the end. That is huge for real-time monitoring, video summarization, or even just a robot interacting with the world. If you don't have to keep saying the same thing over and over, you save an enormous amount of processing time. And we can actually quantify that benefit. This selective decoding process reduced the number of decoding operations by about 2.85 times, yeah. all while keeping the same output quality. They measure that with things like CIDR scores, which check how similar the caption is to what a human would write. So a system running at, say, 0.35 hertz with selective decoding performs just as well as a uniform system running at 1 hertz. It makes real-time perception practical. So zooming out a bit now, where does VLJPay actually fit into the bigger AI landscape? It really sounds like it's cherry-picking the best capabilities from other models while just shedding all their inefficiencies. It truly does integrate the best of both worlds. Hmm. On one hand, it has the strength of models like CLIP. It can leverage those huge web scale image text pairs, even the noisy ones, which gives it really strong retrieval capabilities. You know, finding images from complex text queries. Hmm. But CLIP is just a retriever. It can't actually generate anything. And that's where the other side comes in. Unlike a pure retrieval model, VLGP also has the task coverage of a traditional VLM. It can handle things like visual question answering, video captioning, but crucially, it does it through that super efficient, non-generative embedding base route we've been talking about. That dual capacity, strong retrieval plus conceptual generation seems transformative, especially when you think about high stakes applications. I'm thinking about robotics or, you know, the huge challenge of building a true world model. And this is where the GPR architectures focus on abstract concepts really, really shines. If you look at the world prediction benchmark, it tests an AI's ability to plan based on intuitive physics and common sense. And VLGP is adapted here not to generate the next frame of a video, but to reason about action. How does that planning process work if it's not generating? Well, it encodes the start and end images, where the robot is and where it needs to be, and it combines them into a single state embedding. 
basically the concept of the required change. Then it encodes a list of possible actions, like pick up the blue box or move right, into their own action embeddings. And the model simply picks the most likely action by choosing the one whose conceptual embedding is closest to the target state's embedding. So it's not simulating the action, it's calculating the conceptual shortest path between the current state and the goal. That just highlights its potential for really sophisticated planning, all based on manipulating abstract ideas, not wasting time rendering all the in-between steps. So to summarize our deep dive here, I think the fundamental takeaway is that efficiency and intelligence in AI might not be found in the ability to create high fidelity output. Instead, the future could belong to systems like VLJBES, which prioritize the ability to efficiently and accurately predict the underlying concept in latent space. That one realization is what's driving these massive gains, half the model size and almost three times faster at inference. It's a big deal. It really makes you wonder what the ultimate goal of AI research should be. If the most effective path to deep understanding, to planning, to reasoning, if it bypasses the tedious resource intensive need for pixel by pixel or token by token generation, what does that imply for the race to create true world models? Will the most intelligent, efficient AI systems of tomorrow be the quiet, non-generative ones, focused solely on efficient conceptual prediction for fast, reliable planning, while the flashy generative models just remain these expensive content creators, something to chew on as you watch the next wave of hyper-realistic video demos?